I'm Pat Ponticell here at the SAE World Congress in Detroit. With me is Mike Freilich of Eaton. Welcome, Mike. Thank you, good to be here. So tell us, what is your title and what are your responsibilities at Eaton? I manage our advanced engineering group for Eaton Supercharger Division in Marshall, Michigan. And my team is responsible for developing next generation supercharger technologies. You presented a paper here less than an hour ago. What was the main point you tried to drive home with that paper? We were presenting our latest uh, series of superchargers called the V-Series for volumetric, and we presented how we have continued to evolve our supercharger to meet our customers' continuously changing need for boost, uh, focused on more low speed, volumetric efficiency to enable um, downsizing and downspeeding of internal combustion engines. Okay, now I'd like to ask you just a generic question, and maybe we can get into more detail about your paper later, but. We hear a lot about developments in turbocharging, not so much in supercharging, why is that? Well, up until 2007 when we launched our TVS supercharger product line, we were more focused on the high performance market. And with that, with the TVS, we now became competitive with turbochargers and are now a viable boosting option for fuel economy as well as performance. Uh, so we're now working with many OEMs on fuel economy solutions because the supercharger offers good instantaneous response so they can continue to downsize and downspeed their engines for fuel economy. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you to compare superchargers and tu turbochargers. Uh, can you do that for me, the relative advantages, sure. disadvantages? Both devices have their advantages. Um, as I said, the supercharger really offers good instantaneous boost response. Um, just putting a supercharger on an engine won't necessarily give you better fuel economy. It's got to be a complete system design with the OEM that they have to design their engine, their transmission, their drive ratios to really offer the, the best potential benefit that you can get in terms of fuel economy. Now I think you're going to see more in the future the true optimum solution is a combination of the two. Uh, such as Volkswagen Twin Charger, you're going to see more of that in the market, uh, compound boost systems with a turbocharger and a supercharger. Mm -hmm. And do you have contracts for that kind of business? We're working with several OEMs, so I can't really go into details on that. Mm -hmm. What would you say are the best applications for superchargers versus turbochargers? Um, really all applications. Traditionally, we've had many high horsepower applications. Uh, if you think about some of the top level, the Corvette ZR1, uh, the Mustang GT500 has our rotating groups in it. Uh, but we've also been focusing a lot on uh, fuel economy solutions. For example, Nissan's 1.2 liter, which they launched last year, uh, offers best in class fuel economy and emissions, uh, as well as Nissan's just announced that they're launching a 2.5 liter hybrid engine. Uh, again, for fuel economy benefits in a, a um, sport utility. So, mm -hmm. performance and fuel economy, depending on how the OEMs want to use our products. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how much better can superchargers get? And, and what's what would you say is the biggest technology hurdle to making them better? Okay. That's something we challenge ourselves with every day. Uh, to be honest, I don't know how far we're going to be able to go, but we continuously focus on efficiency. That was part of the point of my paper today, was um, highlighting developments in volumetric efficiency improvements. Um, always looking for higher speed. Uh, of course, cost is always a, a concern with our customers, so maintaining performance while decreasing cost. So there's, there's still opportunity for us to continue to develop, and uh, that's our job every day. How extensively do you work? with the OEMs? We work very closely. Um, we do the supercharger component itself, but we also offer air management systems. Uh, if you look at the Audi, for example, uh, it's the supercharger incorporated in the entire intake manifold. It includes uh, intercoolers, it's got the electronic intake throttle on it, it's got um, manifold air pressure sensors. So it's one entire unit, uh, it's a system, but again, there's a lot of back and forth collaboration in terms of the sizing of all those components. Packaging is always a challenge under hood. Um, so it's definitely a, a collaboration.